LeBron, what's your decision? Um, in this fall, man, this is, this is very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. And as a result of that broadcast, the crisis has deepened dramatically. I'm joined by our crisis correspondent, Spartacus Mills. Spartacus, this is huge history happening, it, isn't it? It's bigger than that, Chris. It's large. I mean, if you've got a history book at home, take it out, throw it in the bin. It's worthless. The history books now will have to be rewritten. What will they say? They'll quite simply say, LeBron chose Miami. And everything else will be a footnote. A push for time. Can you sum it up in a word? No. A sound? <laughs> Spartacus, thank you. Oh, the decision. You know, I think I put it perfectly in this video when I said, the decision, the day that for some people, LeBron James' reputation was irreparably damaged. Because yeah, I think there's a sizable portion of NBA fans that have never forgiven LeBron for this move. LeBron went on national TV and spent over an hour toying with the emotions of six fan bases only to break the hearts of five of them, including his hometown. The ensuing hatred and vitriol that LeBron received afterwards is unmatched, and it took LeBron years until until his reputation finally started to recover. So let's look back on that day when the best player in the world had the entire league on edge for every word he said. This is the decision. And if you enjoy our content, consider hitting that like button, sharing the video around, and giving us a subscribe so you never miss out on one of our videos. Thank you guys again for 10,000 subscribers. Y'all really are the best. So LeBron James was in a weird spot at the end of the 2010 NBA season. He had just lost to a bunch of old guys in the second round, and now he was going to be a free agent. I'm surprised he couldn't make it out of the second round. I mean, he had Shaq. It's just a little dirty. It's still good. It's still good. What more can you ask for? I mean, I love Shaq, but if the old Shaq was Superman, then that was Clark Kent. He was mega washed at that point. Yeah, that was a 37 year old Shaq. They tried to fix things, got Jameson at the deadline. Apparently they could have had Amari, you hear this? But they didn't want to give up JJ Hickson. It's just a little slimy. It's still good, it's still good. Oh, NBA teams just not trading for superstars because, oh, we have this young guy that's got some promise and he might be really good. And then he just turns out to be an average player at best. I love JJ Hickson. He had a few good years for us, but he wasn't Amari Stoudemire. No, but J.J. Hickson, he could get up. He was fun to watch on the Cavs. I'll give him that. He was fun to watch. He could not get up. Oh, he could get up. J.J. No. Hickson would dunk on people at 6'9". No, he would not. You He'd are get rebounds. Hating. He was good at getting rebounds. He could position himself, but he was not dunking on a lot of people. Go back and watch those highlights. You don't know what you're talking about. I'll look for him. I'll try. <laughs> Yeah, it was hyped up all year. The LeBron and Kobe finals, we were finally going to get it. That would have been something special. It's a shame it didn't happen. I think it's the biggest missed opportunity in NBA history. I mean, we should have had it the year before, but those pesky Orlando Magic got in the way. And then this next year, and LeBron, you don't even get to the conference finals. You get bounced in the second round by the old Celtics. It's just a little airborne. It's still good. It's still good. It's good. I know. Those old boys still made the finals, though. That team was nice. They did. They were good, and again, LeBron had basically no help, but God, to go out in the second round to the fourth seed Celtics, just disappointing all around. You can tell when LeBron walks off the court when he takes that jersey off. Like, he is just, he's crushed. He's not even really mad. He's just, just so disappointed. Well, I don't know, because I always heard that LeBron quit on the team. He had a triple-double in game six, didn't he? Something like that, yeah. I, I don't know how you can quit on a team and still get a triple-double. That's pretty damn impressive, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just put put that in the GOAT argument for LeBron. He quit on his team and still got a triple-double. Still found a way. Only Braun could do it. This free agency class that LeBron was entering, though, hyped up as one of the best of all time, and to this day, probably still the best of all time. You had LeBron, you had D-Wade, Chris Bosh, Dirk, Yao, Amari Stoudemire, Joe Johnson, Carlos Boozer. I mean, that's a solid, what, nine all-stars right there that are up for grabs? It is the best of all time. Even Paul Pierce and Ray Allen were free agents as well. There was just all-time Hall of Famer 
summers all available in one summer. So many teams just said, screw it, we're clearing out all the cap space. And the hype was just unreal for this free agency. I mean, if you think about the NBA now, imagine if Giannis, Dame, Kawhi, Paul George, Embiid, and fuck, I don't know, Anthony Davis or something. We're all free agents this off season. Yeah, now teams just trade players before this even happens. Might as well get like four first round picks for a player instead of watching them walk. Oh well, yeah, I mean, they got a first class look at what can happen when you have a disgruntled star and just be like, oh yeah, they'll stay. Like the Toronto Raptors with the Chris Bosh. Oh, he'll stay, surely, right? He ain't going anywhere. Oops. Chris Bosh was gone. He was the only guy on this list where there was no chance he was coming back. That dude was done with Canada. Well, I'm off to destroy Canada. They've had it too good for too long. I mean, you gotta whip out a passport for every road game. That's gotta be annoying after a while. <laughs> So the teams that had a chance at signing LeBron, well, there was the teams that had a chance at signing LeBron and there was the teams that LeBron took a meeting with. Let's start with the group that just got a meeting because LeBron was bored that day, I guess. That just, <laughs> they didn't have a chance. It was the Clippers and their pitch was Neil O'Shea, Blake Griffin, and Baron Davis. Now, as Blazer fans, we both know, uh, Neil O'Shea as a selling point, instant red flag. He sucks. <laughs> Ruined our team. Now we got Joe Cronin and Joe out there making moves. <laughs> is but lebron was never going to be a clipper like that's not lebron he's lebron james you think he's going to go to the clippers lebron is too big for the clippers and this is not any kind of slight towards the clippers or their fans you know they have some great fans but lebron is is too big for the clippers it's like apparently when kobe almost signed with the clippers in 2004 like kobe especially in a clippers uniform would have just felt wrong but seeing lebron in a clippers uniform just doesn't work even more so lebron wanted some help baron davis ain't that help Help. And Blake Griffin, like, he was good. Young Blake Griffin, he'd get up for sure. But is that team really a contender? Probably because they have LeBron, but not better than the other options at all. Uh, they definitely would have been a contender with LeBron because back then any team with LeBron was a contender. But unproven Blake, aging Baron Davis, no, not good enough. That's not good enough. Then you have the Nets. Fresh off a 12-win season, they had Jay-Z, <laughs> a billionaire owner. Why not go there? I will say, if LeBron was looking for the Everest of the NBA, this would have been it. A 12-win team and taking them to a championship wouldn't have happened. No chance at all, but would have been interesting. Again, like, why did he take a meeting? Was he just trying to hang out with Jay-Z for an afternoon? You can do that without the Nets there. <laughs> You're LeBron James, you don't need the Nets. Like, come on, man. Maybe he just went to hang out with Jay-Z and Jay-Z was just like, oh, hey, LeBron, I brought some <laughs> of my business associates with me. Why don't you meet them and talk <laughs> basketball for a couple hours and see where it goes. And LeBron just like, God damn it. That's the only way because yeah, the Nets meeting makes no sense otherwise. Coming off a 12-win season, I guess they had Jay-Z and, and people always used to make a big deal about their owner being some Russian billionaire, which okay, but <laughs> I don't see any other reason why you would take a meeting with them. The other team in New York, I'm going to defend the Knicks here because of course I am. They were rumored to be LeBron's first choice. Who knows if that's true, but there was a lot of hype like the years prior about the Knicks, LeBron going to the Knicks, the big Apple and apparently hey, hold, on, hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on one sec rumored by who rumored by Stephen A who the hell thought the Knicks were his first option I mean people thought that like around 2008 2009 I saw some photoshops I remember them man went on Google images and searched LeBron Knicks uniform <laughs> yeah basically and the meeting went so bad they lost their chance which makes sense this is just total Knicks like what do you expect I expect nothing different if your big gun is Isaiah Thomas in an executive role <laughs> Not good enough at all. I'm shocked it worked on Amari Stoudemire. Yeah, even Amari was trying to say like, hey, LeBron, come team up with me. And LeBron was like, <laughs> that's oh, not going to no. happen, buddy. No. <laughs> Convince Melo, though. Well, Melo's from New York. Really, though, there were three contenders. There was the Bulls, there was the Cavs, and there was the Heat. And let's start with the Bulls. This roster looked good at the time, and in hindsight, it would have been insane. Because this was back when the Bulls were an ascending team. I think they were the seventh seed the year before. They played one of the best playoff series in NBA history against Boston that first round. They had Luol Deng, they had Derrick Rose, they had Joakim Noah, they signed Carlos Boozer, they had Tom Thibodeau as their coach. You slot LeBron into that group with where those players were 
going, where that team was going. Whew. I think, and this isn't even a hot take, if you add LeBron to that team, I think that's the best defensive team ever. They were already the best defensive team in the league. You had prime LeBron as a free safety back there on that defense. No one's scoring over 80. This was prime LeBron too. This yep. was athletic young LeBron. This was when he was arguably the best one-on-one -on -one defender in the league. And he's a great help side defender. So yeah, you throw him into that lineup with Dang and Boozer and Rose and Joakim Noah locking down the paint. No one's scoring on them. No chance. It's over. Good luck. Yeah, honestly, in hindsight, this seems like it would be by far the... Actually, it's tricky because Derrick Rose got hurt the next year, but people would say, you know, LeBron's now on this team. It takes some pressure off Derrick Rose. Maybe he doesn't have to drive in amongst the trees. Would Rose have been able to stay healthy? I don't know. But boy, if this team could have stayed healthy, they would have been scary. Yeah, a lot of people actually thought Chicago was going to be the team. Barack Obama even wanted him to go there. I mean, this is 2010. Obama had all the clout in the world. But I think the main thing is, would he ever have been able to get out of Jordan's shadow? Like, he's not going to win six titles in Chicago. I don't think anyone in Chicago will ever be as big as Michael Jordan. Unless the Bears get a quarterback that wins them five Super Bowls. And that's not going to happen. No, yeah, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> the Bears right now just need to draft a quarterback that can make the Pro Bowl. <laughs> There's an alternate universe where the year's 2030 and outside of Chicago, the arena, there's a Jordan statue on one side and a LeBron statue on the other. Imagine that. Ooh. My only question is, would the Bulls have let LeBron keep wearing 23? Would Mike have okayed that? Hell no. No, no <laughs> chance Mike says yes to that. <laughs> Well, LeBron before this said he was going to stop wearing 23 altogether. That's a good point. He did say that. I just want to be a fly on the wall in that alternate universe where the Bulls president calls LeBron into a room, calls Mike into a room, and LeBron says, Mike, I want to wear 23. <laughs> and Michael Jordan just looks at him and is like, I mean, maybe you do, but that ain't fucking happening. <laughs> Yeah, if this would have happened, the Bulls, you know, maybe LeBron wins a couple titles there. Maybe stays wins even more. The Bulls could have been up there with the Celtics and Lakers. Maybe I'm talking too much here, but this really could have changed the trajectory of that franchise. And since then, things haven't exactly gone well. They're already at six. Could they have gotten to eight, maybe nine? Maybe if LeBron stays there long term and Derrick Rose stays healthy, could they have gotten to 10? That's probably stretching it a little bit, but they definitely would have got to seven, probably would have got to eight. I mean, with the way Carlos Boozer played, once he got there? Probably not. That dude turned into a bum once he signed there. Turned into a jump shooter, which he was not very good at. No. He was a beast in Utah with Darren Williams, and he just fell off. How about the Cavs, though? They were the incumbent. They were his hometown. He had been with them his entire career, but boy, they had nothing to pitch him on, basketball-wise. Like, that team was trash. No, LeBron technically did play with an All-Star. Mo Williams made an All-Star game, but as far as I'm concerned, LeBron's first stint in Cleveland, he did not ever have an All-Star. How the hell did Mo Williams make an All-Star game? Because he was the second best player on the best team in the NBA. Okay, I guess. That's that's the only reason why. But yeah, it's a miracle LeBron even won 61 games with that roster. You can go back and look at it. It's trash. Not only did he win 61 that year, he won 66 the prior year. 66 games! That's actually ridiculous. That's insane. The first year that KD joined the Warriors, they won 67 games. Think about that. That's, That's why he's the GOAT. The GOAT. The GOAT. The goat. <laughs> <laughs> You know what screams functional as a franchise? You win 61 games, you have the coach of the year in Mike Brown, and then you fire him. <laughs> The season, your star, your superstar, the franchise player, the best player of all time is a free agent. You fire him. Why would he go back? Well, I think they fired him in hopes he would come back. Yes. Like that would be a selling point is like, hey, we got rid of the coach that has nurtured you for the past like four or five years into becoming a superstar because apparently winning 61 games when LeBron's second star is Mo Williams is not good enough. Mike Brown's in that meeting like, what the hell do you expect? He's talking to the GM. He's like, look at this fucking roster, man. <laughs> It's LeBron and a bunch of deck chairs. <laughs> I just won 61 games with that and I get fired. I'm surprised that most teams that year didn't play like four guys on LeBron and one <laughs> on the other four. 
<laughs> Four guys just create a box around LeBron and then plant one guy in the paint. Yeah, in hindsight, people were saying LeBron leaving is like a divorce. And that's true. Cleveland, that must have hurt. But you can't blame him. Like, really? You have to make an effort. And I'll, I'll give the Cavs a little bit of a break. It's not the easiest thing to do to convince star NBA players to play in Cleveland. Dame's had this problem his whole career, trying to convince literally anyone to come play with him in Portland. So I'll give them a bit of a break. At the same time, you have to do better than Mo Williams. <laughs> Mo Williams is a nice player. <laughs> <laughs> On a championship team, he's probably, though, at best, he's your third best player. It's just what it is. Well, Mo Williams still got that championship in Cleveland. He was on that 2016 team. Let's not forget. Yeah, he snubbed LeBron in their first meeting back in Cleveland, didn't shake his hand, and then six <laughs> years later was riding his coattails to get that ring. <laughs> Kissing his ass. And then there's the heat. Which, in terms of basketball, them and the Bulls, they're by far the two best options. The Cavs for basketball were trash. But the Heat, you had D-Wade back, you had Chris Bosh back, but... I think a lot of people before the decision was even made were like, damn, how are you going to have probably three of the top 10 players in the league on the same team? That was basically unheard of. Yeah, that's insane. In hindsight, God damn, there's nothing like that in the league today. No, they, they, we had it for a while with the Warriors. Even then, they didn't have three top 10 players. They had two top five. And then another top 15 and then another probably top 20, 25. I mean, that's pretty insane as well. If you want to go back to the mid 80s i guess you could make the argument the lakers magic kareem james worthy were all top yeah, 10 players that's up there but at least the lakers i mean they traded for kareem but they drafted magic and they drafted james worthy too this was the first time that free agency was going to create a team that was this good i think the heat Dwayne wade's been his closest friend in the nba his entire career you had heat culture it wasn't as big back then but it was still a thing pat riley upstairs yep and then you have south beach and we're forgetting one thing what's that no state income tax oh my god i forgot <laughs> about that dude espn would not shut the fuck up and they still don't when talking about players going to texas or florida teams there's like well no state income tax like that, that that's a big difference makes a big difference i'm like does it does it really if memory serves me correctly Shaq left florida to go to california not exactly a famous place for their low income taxes so also i mean sure you can make that argument but lebron took a massive pay cut he did all three of them did So the actual decision itself, it was filmed at a boys and girls club, and we'll give some props to LeBron here because he did it for the kids. Yep, we love that. Raised a lot of money, but that couldn't mask the fact that this was overdone. <laughs> I mean, it's one hour long special, like. An hour long special to announce where you're gonna sign in free agency. First of all, we need to give a round of applause to ESPN for milking what could have been a two minute segment on SportsCenter into an hour. That's impressive. Yeah, what? I don't get how they even did that. If memory serves, the first half of it, and honestly, the second half, because I feel like LeBron announced his decision kind of in the middle. Yeah. But the first half was just an interview, and the second half was also an interview. Just say he did it for the kids. That's what LeBron should have said afterwards. You know, I think he has said that before. <laughs> I think he said it in the post game uh, after his first game back in Cleveland. I think one of the things he said when the interviewer mentioned him, like, hey, this wasn't received very well. He's like, well, I was just trying to do it for the kids, you know? <laughs> It was all about the kids. You know, my intentions was um, not to hurt anyone. Um, you know, my intentions were solely on kids um, during the whole um, process. So everyone in Cleveland just hates the kids, is what we're saying. Speaking of kids, a 13-year-old Donovan Mitchell was in attendance. Ironically, he plays for the Cavs nowadays. Holy sh**, he does. Yeah. I, I had not made that connection yet. Things come full circle. It's how it works. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. All right, Cleveland, picking up a win. There we go. <laughs> Dunked on you quite a bit so far, so... <laughs> We'll give you your props there. We'll give you a W on this. The fact that 13 million people watched, that's more than any game in the 2020 or 2021 finals. It's more than most of the games in the 2022 finals, if I remember correctly. I think only games five and six drew in more viewers. I mean, I guess that's why ESPN stretched it out to an hour long. Gotta get those ads in. Honestly, I don't think I watched this. You didn't watch this? I have no memory of this. Really? I remember exactly where I was when I was watching this. I was watching it in my living room with my family. 
Remember, we watched like the whole thing up until he made his decision. Then we turned it off because I ain't watching. What? This was in 2010. <laughs> so I was 12 years old. 12 year old me is not watching 30 minutes of just interviews on TV. That ain't happening. And what was your reaction? I was so excited because I, at that point, was a huge LeBron James fan. I still kind of am, although him playing for the Lakers complicates things. I just, I can't bring myself to cheer for him. I can't do it. We'll put that aside. I, at the time, was a huge LeBron fan. He was my favorite player. And I was like, finally, finally my man is going to get some help. One of the most iconic lines in NBA history, the most iconic line I can think of off the top of my head, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and join the Miami Heat. Like, that's just classic. I would have picked the word infamous. Okay. But iconic works too. Where did you think he was going before this, though? Like, what was your pick for where he would sign? Oh, the second Wade and Bosch said they were announcing they were going with the Heat, I was like, yeah, LeBron's there. Once I saw them both on TV, Mike Wilbon did that interview. I, I just knew. I don't know why. I just remember. That's the one thing I remember. That interview, I was watching ESPN. They were both said they were going to Miami. And I was like, well, LeBron's there. And we just got a super team. I remember watching that Wade and Bosch interview too. But I still remember thinking, I think he's going back to Cleveland. I just, I couldn't picture LeBron playing in a jersey other than Cleveland. I'd only been following the NBA for like a year or two at this point. So like things I hadn't seen before, I just couldn't fathom it. Like I couldn't <laughs> fathom a superstar of LeBron's caliber changing teams. His 12 year old brain could not calculate. Well, you should have been searching up those jersey swaps like I was. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. A Photoshop on Google, that would have maybe changed my mind. Oh, oh yeah, LeBron could go to Miami because <laughs> this guy right here, he just proved it. He put a heat jersey on him. Yeah. Also, LeBron, you could tell it was a much younger LeBron. He was 25 at the time. That dude was so nervous. It's weird to see in hindsight. Like, you see LeBron now. He's one of the most calm, collected guys, well-spoken athletes in the entire world. But man, that looked, it looked tough, like painful for him to say that. He said it before he announced his decision. He just looks to the side, like he looks down away from yep. Bob Costas. And he's like, this is very tough. <laughs> but yeah, God, he looked visibly rattled. To South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Oh, God. Oh. oh, this show just never ceases to exceed my expectations of how brutal it can be, truly. Why was this an hour? <laughs> you made him sit up there nervous as shit for an hour because he did it for the kids he was up there for an hour sweating bullets for those kids <laughs> and what did those kids ever do for him nothing yeah they didn't do shit donovan mitchell ain't helping him out these days <laughs> donovan got ahead of the lakers no 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 no, no. i'm not not even gonna yep. start that no yep. donovan, donovan stay with cleveland lakers. donovan stay with cleveland <laughs> i like it when you're in cleveland you know lebron he influenced me from the days at the boys and girls club <laughs> we're teaming up <laughs> You know LeBron would come out and just make up some shit like, I met a young Donovan that day, and I knew that boy was going to be special eventually. It's a dream come true to finally play with him. I could just tell, I was looking out in the audience, I, I saw a hooper, and I was like, he's going to tear up the league one day. It's hilarious that no one's tried to replicate this since. Like, this was the case study in how not to announce where you're signing in free agency. Every player nowadays, they try to be as respectful as possible. Like, most of the time, it's just an article for the Players' Tribune. Like, if it's not that, it's a Woj bomb, too, which the player can't really do anything about. It's just, it's interesting how LeBron did, like, this whole thing for charity, for the kids. Everyone That's fucking terrible. hated it. And now, no one does it anymore. Honestly, it's not fun anymore. Like, I want to see some players get a bit more creative. What about the gender review? Like they pop the balloons, the team's colors like fall. Yeah, that would be fucking awesome. Or like a college football, like the fake out, choosing which hat you put on. Oh, the hats. <laughs> I want to see something more creative. This is getting a bit boring. You got to admit that. You can see Zion in a couple years or John Morant <laughs> making their free agency decision like that. No player is ever going to do this again. No player did it before. It'll never happen again because the backlash was insane. the aftermath of the decision. First of all, this was actually a sign and trade. So LeBron went to the Heat and the Cavs actually got back two second round picks, two first round picks, and the right to swap a first round pick with Miami. I'm just gonna spoil it. They did nothing with those picks. The best player they drafted was Jay Crowder, who they promptly flipped to the Mavericks for Tyler Zeller. Good job, Cleveland. Tyler Zeller gave him probably like three good years though. That's something. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there.
It's it's not. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. You trade LeBron James and the best player you get back is Tyler Zeller. You know your career didn't end up good because you're literally the worst brother and your brother was Cody Zeller. <laughs> Ouch, man. Yeah, that was too harsh. I'm sorry. Wow. That was too far. I mean, it's true, but it's too far. That was brutal. Just take a little break from our retrospective on the decision to just skewer Tyler Zeller, I guess. Tyler, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. You you still made the NBA. That's pretty good. That was better than we did. So, yeah. you know what? Props for that. For now. The main thing I remember was the Cavs fans burning the jerseys. I get it, but like, come on, Cleveland. You gotta do better than that. See, I don't get that. I don't get it. That's trashy as hell. It is trashy as hell. That man literally did all he could for that franchise. Brought you more success than you had ever had in your history to that point. And he left essentially because you couldn't surround him with good pieces. And you're gonna burn his jersey? If anything, burn a suit and tie because you're pissed <laughs> at the executives. What's the worst thing we did when LaMarcus Aldridge left? I'm sure there was one like rogue Blazer fan out there that burned his jersey. <laughs> like when LaMarcus left, of course I was upset. At the same time, I was like, you know what? He's going to the Spurs. That's a great organization to go to. They had Kawhi, they had Duncan, Ginobili Parker, Pop. Was I upset? Yeah. At the same time, I was like, you know what? Just got to move on. And thanks, LA, for everything you did for the city. And honestly, we had more of a right to be pissed at LaMarcus than Cleveland at LeBron because LaMarcus had a way better supporting cast. One person who handled it well, you got to admit, was Dan Gilbert. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I thought you were actually going to come up with some famous Cavs fan that was like gracious about it or something. No. The letter. Oh, the letter. The the fact that a billionaire wrote this letter, and you know he wrote it, you know he didn't have a fucking intern type this up. The fact that he wrote this is hysterical. It was in Comic Sans, <laughs> first of all, which it's an interesting choice. Hey, Comic Sans was hot at the time. That was in its prime. I guess, but... <laughs> But an open letter to your fans after your superstar leaves you? You write it in Comic Sans? Dude should have just whipped out the crayons. Seriously, a handwritten letter in crayons would have been better. <laughs> Among other things in the letter, he guaranteed the Cavs would win a title before LeBron did, mm -hmm. which went swimmingly. <laughs> uh, here are just some choice words he used to describe LeBron in that letter. Uh, selfish, heartless, callous, and cowardly betrayal. A billionaire wrote that. I mean, that dude probably lost like a couple hundred million with LeBron leaving. That hurt that man's pocketbook. I bet that franchise lost like 20% of its value. Also lost 100,000 when he got fined for it. That should have been a steeper fine. An NBA owner calling a player who left them selfish, heartless, callous, and that they betrayed them. That's a $500,000 fine. Also, the media reaction after this, like, it seemed like LeBron had a major scandal. He just left the team. Yeah, the media reaction action i kind of get it at the same time i kind of don't because good lord every media outlet out there just completely skewered him for this decision and i think most people were focusing on less the decision and more how he made it i feel like with fans it was the opposite it was more the decision he made and not how he made it but god yeah you're right i mean you think with the way that the media were talking about lebron yeah it was like he laundered money for a drug cartel or something i mean brett Favre did that no one talked about it exactly former players especially dumped on lebron for this michael jordan came out and said that he wouldn't have even considered reaching out to like magic johnson or larry bird to join forces. That's a terrible comparison. Magic Johnson, widely considered the best point guard ever. Bird, who outside of LeBron is considered the best small forward ever. Get out of here with that. It's not like LeBron joined Steph Curry and Giannis or something. Like, it's way in Bosch. Like, sure, it was kind of overpowered, but come on. Yeah, that's not three of the top five players on the same team. One other thing Dan Gilbert did, and this is just, this is peak petty <laughs> by Dan Gilbert. So a lot of people might not know that Dan Gilbert owned Fathead. You remember Fatheads? They were those big, like, life-size athlete posters you could put on your walls. Yeah, I remember Fatheads. Dan Gilbert owned that company, and after LeBron decided to sign with the Heat, he changed the price of LeBron's Fathead from $99.99 to $17.41. If you don't know what that is, $17.41 is the birth year of notorious traitor Benedict Arnold, who defected <laughs> from the Americans to the British during the Revolutionary War, which... That is just peak petty. This dude is so damn petty. And I'm kind of pissed. I didn't know about this till now. I would have bought like four brawn fatheads and just put them on every corner of my room. <laughs> 
done that for less than 60 bucks. Could have had a LeBron fat head in every room. It's a missed opportunity. Yeah, it really is. Someone walks into the bathroom at your house. There's just a massive LeBron fat head. On each wall. <laughs> Just staring at you. And on the ceiling. <laughs> Damn, man, you, uh, you're a pretty big LeBron fan, I guess. Oh, yeah. This isn't all. I got five more in my closet, too. Just haven't found a place <laughs> on the walls for him yet. Oh, these are going to be worth a lot of money one day. Yeah, if he ever, like, goes back to Cleveland, I guess. That's never going to happen, though. No shot. That would never happen. So how about the trajectory for the two teams? The Heat, obviously, they went to four finals in a row, won two of them. The Cavs, they went to have the worst record in the NBA. And I think that vindicated LeBron's decision. Are you born? You go from the best team in the league to the worst team in the league, essentially removing one player. I'm sure they made other roster moves, but come on, that's gotta be vindication. Yeah, it made complete sense. You take LeBron off those Cavs teams, and like we said, they were trash. And then the Heat winning two out of four titles, I wouldn't even say that's like that impressive. That was kind of expected. You could have even said maybe they should have won three, but still, LeBron gets two titles. He made the right decision in my book. Honestly, the Heat though, you mentioned it. Did they fully succeed? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, this was a team that was hailed as the greatest team of all time before they even played a game. I mean, they threw a giant party for themselves before <laughs> they'd even won a game. Can't forget the infamous not one, not, not two, two, not three, three not, not four, four, not five, five not, not six. six. Not seven. seven. So you go all the way to seven and you only get two and you lost one series you should not have lost. They should not have yeah. lost to the Dallas Mavericks. Not saying they were like cheated out of losing. It's that that was a team you were clearly better than, at least on paper. And if not for LeBron just going into a shell, they should have beat the Mavericks that year. Yeah, I'll give them a pass. Oh, if they would have won four titles in a row, that would have been insane. But you got to at least get three. You got to beat the Mavericks. Once they got older, Wade kind of fell pretty quickly and everything. Sure, you can't go perfect, but I would have expected a three-peat. But no, they just won the two. Interesting thing to point out. The Cavs actually won three of the four NBA draft lotteries <laughs> after LeBron left. Yeah, I remember I kept getting pissed. No hate to Damon Gilbert's kid but i just remember every time he would be at the draft lottery <laughs> and they'd somehow win it again and i'd be like are you kidding me i didn't mind the first time they won it because it was like okay lebron just left and now yeah. they get a number one pick to rebuild themselves the second time they won it i was like damn they're getting pretty lucky anthony bennett Whoa. the third time they won it i was like what the <laughs> fuck? come on this is three times in four years why cleveland yeah, but they also took Anthony Bennett, so did they really win it? It's a good point. They won it one and a half times. True. Kyrie was a hit. Yeah. The other two, well, one of them was a straight miss. The other was, it hung on the rim for a while and I guess dropped through. Did LeBron make the right decision in hindsight? If you were LeBron, would you do it all over again and still go to the Heat? I, I would still do the Heat. I know in hindsight, a lot of people would say the Bulls, but I'm going to work off the assumption that Derrick Rose still gets injured. I think LeBron would have been able to get more out of a declining Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh than he would have out of that Bulls team if Derrick Rose had gotten hurt. Because Rose missed what? He missed an entire season, played 15 games, and then missed another entire season. If he misses games on that pace, LeBron, Joakim Noah, Lou Aldang, Carlos Boozer, they're still good, but I think LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, and eventually, you know, Ray Allen and whatnot, I think they're just a little bit better. Yeah, he made the right decision. Going to the Heat, it basically guaranteed he'd at least get one title. He got two of them down there and that was the main thing everyone wouldn't shut up about lebron doesn't have a title he's not the guy you can't be the king without a title so he went to miami got his one title picked up another and then from there lebron had some credibility he could leave and do his own thing after that so i think it was the right decision the bulls a bit of uncertainty there maybe it could have been an insane dynasty but he made the right decision in hindsight i agree What's the legacy of the decision though? I mean, I briefly talked about this a little bit in my top 10 days that changed the NBA forever. It just, it, it changed how players approach free agency. You know, players saw LeBron essentially come out and say, I'm going to make the best decision for me and I don't care what anyone says. And I think it really just empowered players to finally be like, you know what? I'm going to do what's best for me. Yeah, I don't think a single event has changed the modern NBA more than this. Players nowadays, if they're not in a good situation, they'll just get out. And I don't think that would have happened without LeBron, especially the KD move to the Warriors. There's no way that happens without the decision. And in some ways it's good. Players should have the choice to go where they want 
months. But in other ways, now you're looking at a league where players change teams every couple years and the NBA, you can't really stick with a single team. It's more so just like players moving back in the 90s, the 2000s before that, that didn't really happen. Yeah, unless you're born in a city that has a team, most of the people who live in cities that don't have teams, they pick what team they root for based on the players that are on that team. You know, your favorite player plays on the Lakers. Oh, I'll be a fan of the Lakers. Or your favorite player plays on, you know, Oklahoma City. I'll be a fan of Oklahoma City. Well, what happens when that player leaves that team? Like, are you going to follow that player? Do you stick with that team? You know, it's just, it's difficult. Now, I think the one thing that bothers a lot of fans is the players who sign like a five-year max extension or a four-year max extension, and then a year later demand a trade. It's like, well, you just re-upped with us for five years. Well, like we said, teams are so afraid of players walking and getting nothing that players can basically be a free agent at any point if they just demand a trade and teams don't want to watch their star player just walk and get nothing in return. So they kind of have to send them somewhere. And we got LeBron James to thank for it all. And that's the video. What was your reaction to LeBron's decision? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping it a like and sharing it around as it helps us a whole bunch. And if you enjoy our content, consider checking out some of our other videos as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.